Allah says, has not the time come for the believers. So Allah Ta'ala here isn't addressing the, those who reject faith. He's not rejecting those who are ignorant of the faith altogether. He's addressing those who proclaim and profess the faith. And then yet the Lilladina Amen has not the time come for those who believe and taqsha that their hearts are humble with the remembrance of Allah. And they're not like those who were given the scripture previously, uh, prior to them, the earlier communities given the scripture. And the time between they're receiving the message, the arrival and the coming of their messenger, and the time that they live in grew long. And their hearts became hard. And many of them became morally bankrupt. You should know. And Allah that Allah revives the earth after his, after his death. <coughs> and we have made our signs clear to you that perhaps you will use your intellect, that perhaps you will be reasonable. So Allah is telling us that the time between we're inspired with this religion, either as a community, the beginning of the community, or someone who converts, many converts, come into the religion, and they're filled with fervor, and they're, they're passionate, and their hearts are, 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 are enlivened by the message. And then as the years go by, they start to cool off. Sometimes the heart becomes hard. Or the ummah as a general characteristic, the hearts become hard. And then the hearts are hard. And the light of truth becomes dim. And the power of the scripture loses its force in the hearts. And shaitan begins to take advantage of that darkness and their moral fiber begins to be corrupted. They start dressing in ways they didn't dress. They talk, start talking in ways they didn't talk. They start acting in ways they didn't act. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He doesn't leave us in that state. He reminds us, Ilamu, you should know. <laughs> that Allah revives the earth after his death. This is a metaphor. The earth are those hardened hearts. And the rain that revives the earth is the remembrance of Allah. As mentioned in the, the first verse. And taqshi'a khulubuhum li dhikri you should know that Allah revives the earth after his death. Allah revives the earth. What happens when the rain comes through the earth? Before the vegetation appears. We see this here in California where the rain is seasonal. So the rain stops around this time. And then after, after May and June and July, August, September, the earth is as hard as this minbar, as this mihrab. And then the rain comes and what happens? The earth becomes soft. And then the vegetation comes. And our hearts, when we fill our hearts with the remembrance of Allah, it hardens the heart that it has become soft. And then the vegetation comes. The hearts become alive again. And the fruits, the vegetation, the fruits of worship, the fruits of piety, 
the fruits of consideration, the fruits of ifar, giving preference to others, the fruits of humility start to emanate from that heart. And Allah says he makes his signs clear that perhaps we will be reasonable. May Allah revive our hearts. And he's given us the month of Ramadan where the remembrance of Allah rains down upon the heart like no other time. It rains down with the Qur'an, both reciting it, reading it, pondering its meanings. The Qur'an is dhikrul, uh, dhikrul hakim, is dhikr. The Qur'an is dhikr. And taqsha' qulubum li dhikri Allah. And the, the litanies, the Allah, the supplications of dhikr. And the reward for them is multiplied in Ramadan. And they come down upon our hearts. <coughs> Remembering the favors of Allah is dhikr. So when our hearts are softened, we're humble. And when we're humble, we can appreciate the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ This is dhikr. وَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ Remember the blessing of Allah. One of those great blessings mentioned, mentioned immediately after this phrase. وَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ عَدَاءً فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنُ قُلُوبِكُمْ فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ أَقْوَانًا فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ أَقْوَانًا The great blessing of brotherhood, the great blessing of sisterhood, that's when our hearts become hard, that's lost. Stories of, of Muslims bemeaning and, 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 and debasing other Muslims, ridiculing other Muslims, speaking sarcastically to other Muslims, dismissing other Muslims. This is not the way of brotherhood nor sisterhood. One of the cures is the remembrance of Allah to soften the hearts. Because the hard heart, the hard heart is an arrogant heart. The hard heart is a conceited heart. The hard heart is a, a dismissive heart. A hard heart, 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 a hard heart is a heart that's in that's closer to the way of shaitan than to to the way of islam why if a muslim demeans their fellow muslim in the hadith of brotherhood and sisterhood and Muslim Muslim and يحكر أخاه المسلم كل المسلم كل المسلم على المسلم حرام دمه وماله عد. So عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه. It's related on the authority of Abu Huraira. May Allah be pleased with him. That the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, he said, "Do not envy one another." Al-Hasad envy is described as the disease of the nation. يَدُبُّ إِلَيْكُمْ دَاءُ الْأُمَمِ قَبْلَكُمْ الْبَغْضَاءُ وَالْحَسَدِ The disease of the nation that pre preceded you will creep up on you. Je hatred and jealousy. Hatred and jealousy. لا تحاسدوا Don't envy each other. ولا تناجشوا it's generally meaning don't conspire against the, each other. Specifically, don't raise the price just to deny someone the purchase, either the seller or the buyer. 
Let an edge issue, but generally don't conspire, don't scheme, don't plot against each other. Don't hate one another. Shaitan. He you read the Shaitan in Yuqa'a. Bainakum al Adawatu wa Bhagdahu. Shaitan wants to stimulate hatred, enmity and hatred between you. How could how could Muslims do to Muslims what they're doing to each other in Yemen? If their hearts are filled with hatred, how can Muslims do what they're doing to each other in Syria? I have done. If their hearts are filled with hatred, how can Muslims do what they did to each other in Afghanistan? If their hearts are filled with hatred. Yes, American policy has a place, a part to play. No doubt. But at the end of the day, 99.9% .9 of the time, the one pulling the trigger with the gun pointed at their fellow Muslim is a Muslim. The one flying the plane, yeah, America provides the planes and the bombs, but the one piloting the plane and the one pushing the release button is a Muslim. The one putting the bomb in the masjid of the ones that made tax fear of is a Muslim. Because their hearts have become filled with hatred. And the reverence and respect for the order of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has become meaningless. Because the heart is hard. The heart is hard. Don't hate each other. Don't turn your backs on each other. Because when you turn your backs on each other, you turn your hearts away from each other. Oh, one of the virtues Allah has given us, He's made us upright. Then we've made Him upright. And in being upright, unlike a dog or a cat or a snake, their hearts are pointed towards the ground. They're walking on all fours. Their hearts are pointed towards the ground. Our hearts are pointed outwards. Our hearts are pointed outwards. And when Allah says that Allah Bainukulubikum, He's brought our hearts together. He's brought our hearts together. The Allah Bainukulubikum, those hearts that are projected outward, they meet each other. And when we turn our backs to each other, we turn our hearts away from each other. Don't turn your hearts away from each other. Don't turn your hearts away from each other. That's what made this Ummah strong. It was the solidarity amongst the Muslims. And that solidarity inspired them to defend each other, not to transgress against each other. To defend each other. To respect each other's honor. And Muslim, Akhul Muslim, the Muslim is the brother, the Muslim is the sister of his or her fellow Muslim. He doesn't oppress him. He doesn't abandon or forsake him. He doesn't lie to him. There's only one thing that's repeated in this hadith. And he doesn't look down on him. Doesn't demean them. Then it's repeated, and it's repeated with emphasis. He doesn't look down or demean him. Then the emphasis, It's sufficient evil. The person doesn't have to do anything else. It's sufficient evil for a person. That he looks down on his fellow Muslim. Why? Because in looking down on his fellow Muslim, he's walking in the footsteps of shaitan. I'm better than him. You created him 
From fire, you created me from fire, you created him from, from clay. I'm better than him. I hear stories from Muslim saying, my Muslim brother is always bemeaning me. I'm more knowledgeable than you. My sheikh is better than your sheikh. I read more books than you, than you read. You haven't read even the basic mutums. I've read the shurur. And you haven't benefited from the method nor the sharp in any way whatsoever. And your behavior is a testimony. Your behavior is a testimony to your failure to benefit. You're like a donkey. مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ حُمِّلُ الْتَوْرَاتَ ثُمَّ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَحْمِلُوهَا كَمَثَلِ الْحِمَارِ يَحْمِلُ الْأَسْفَارَ بِثَ قَوْمُ الَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا uh, So excited, I forgot the word. الَّذِينَ حُمِّلُ الْتَوْرَاتَ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَحْمِلُوهَا كَمَثَلِ الْحِمَارِ يَحْمِلُ الْأَسْفَارَ بِثَ مَثَلُ الْقَوْمِ الَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا the, man, the parable of a person, those given the Torah, they were given the scripture, they had the book, but they didn't follow it. It didn't impact on their character. It didn't inform their morals and their effort and their ethics. It's like a donkey carrying books. The donkey doesn't benefit from all those books. Just like the person whose character isn't reformed, whose speech isn't reformed, whose ethics aren't reformed, whose moral fiber isn't reformed. By the knowledge in those books, he's just like the donkey. He's just like the donkey. كَمَثَلِ الْحِمَارِ يَحْمِدُ أَسْفَارِ like a donkey carrying loads of books, carrying tomes, estera, tomes. Alam yatni ladina amanu and taqsha kulubun bidikrillah. Has not the time come for the believers' hearts to be softened by the remembrance of Allah? He united your hearts. And when the hearts are united, then the ranks are united. <coughs> but if the hearts are, Allah, how does Allah describe the Bani Israel, the Jews? <laughs> you think they're united, but the hearts are torn. You think they're united on the surface. <laughs> The hearts are divided. It's all about the hearts, brothers and sisters. That's the foundation. That's the foundation. That's the that's the, the, the place where greatness starts. And to be a great community, we have to be a community of, of enlightened hearts. In conclusion, let me say this. This is the month of Ramadan. It's the month of the Quran. The Quran enlightens and enlivens our hearts. What, does, what did the Messenger of Allah say about the Qur'an, amongst other things? Umar ibn al-Khattabi radiallahu anhu qal qala rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallama inna Allah yarfa'u bihad al-kitab aqwama wa yad'u bih al-akhari that Allah elevates some people by means of this book the Qur'an and he debases others. And where, where does the Qur'an, where does it come? It comes into the heart. Say whoever is an enemy unto the angel Gabriel, for verily he brings it, the Qur'an, down to your heart by the command of Allah. إِذَنْ هُنَا أَمْرِ اللَّهِ A confirmation of what preceded it. وَهُدَى And guidance and glad tidings for the believers. 
Shah Ramadan and the Gizna Fihi Quran, the month of Ramadan during which the Quran was revealed. This month is the opportunity for us to soften our hearts and then to edify our hearts and to illuminate our hearts and to unify our hearts through the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah bless us to be successful in that endeavor. And when we do that, and when we carry that outside of Ramadan, you will see amazing things happen. You will see the unity that you see in this masjid manifested in society at large. You will see this unity manifested in society. You will see this crowd become an entire nation. Uplifted by the remembrance of Allah, uplifted by the Quran. May Allah give us tawfiq. May Allah give us a vision, a Quranic vision of change and reformation and upliftment and unite, unity and solidarity. Allahumma ufi li muslimin wal muslimat wa mu'minin wal mu'minat an ahya'i minhum wa lamwat. Rabbana la tuzir kurubana ba'di idh hadaythana wa hab lana min ladun karahman innaka anta al-wahhaq. ربنا افرغ علينا صبرا وثبت اقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين ربنا افرغ علينا صبرا وثبت اقدامنا وتوفنا مسلمين واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا انت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم انا نعوذ بك من الهم والحزن ونعوذ بك من العجز والكسل ونعوذ بك من الجبن والبخل ونعوذ بك من من قهر الرجال من 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 قهر ونعوذ بك من غلبة الدين وقهر الرجال اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين معاصيك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا بها جنتك ومن اليقين ما يهون به عليهم أصائب الدنيا ومتعنا بأسماعنا وقوتنا وبأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقوتنا ما أحليتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرا على من ظالمنا وانصرنا على من عادانا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا تسلط علينا بذنوبنا لا ي من لا يخ لا خ من لا يخافك ولا يرحمنا يا أرحم الراحمين وعف عنا وفي لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم تقبل منا ما قدمنا في شهرك رمضان من عمل الصالحات من الصيام والقيام والتلاوة القرآن والرقوع والسجود والأوراد والأذكار وكل ما قدمنا إليك يا الله في شهرك المعظم فتقبل هذا منا يا الله وبارك بارك لنا يا الله فيما بقي من رمضان بارك لنا يا الله فيما بقي من رمضان بارك لنا يا الله فيما بقي من رمضان اللهم انصر المسلمين في كل مكان وفي كل زمان اللهم انصر المسلمين في فلسطين يا الله اللهم انصرهم اللهم احمي اللهم احميهم اللهم إنا نسألك حمايتهم وعنايتهم يا الله وحفظهم يا الله ونصر ونصرهم يا الله والمسلمين في كل مكان يا الله في الشام يا الله في أفغانستان يا الله في العراق يا الله في الهند يا الله في كشمير يا الله في بنغال يا الله في بورما يا الله في في مصر يا الله في السودان والحبشة وإريتريا يا الله في كل مكان يا الله في في الجزائر وتونس والمغرب وموريتانيا السنغال وغامبيا وكاميرون سيرابيون في كل مكان يا الله في أفريقيا بأسرها يا الله في آسيا بأسرها يا الله في أوروبا يا الله في هنا في هذا البلد يا الله اللهم انصرنا في هذا البلد يا الله أنت مولانا فانصرنا على قوم الكافرين ببركة القرآن العظيم وبحرمة من أرسلته رحمة للعالمين 
سيدنا وحبيبنا وقرة عيوننا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلاما على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وقيم أقم الصلاة يرحمني يرحمكم الله